When the bow breaks, a planet that was able to cloak itself for thousands of years suddenly reappears and reaches out to the Enterprise with an unusual request. So the kid runs into Riker and his dad catches up to him and says, Henry, you need to go back to class. I hate that teacher and I hate calculus. Everyone needs an understanding of basic calculus, whether they like it or not. Why? He seems like a dumb kid in general. So even if he was in calculus, he's not advanced. The Enterprise finds a trail of breadcrumbs, basically, and Picard believes it's led to Aldea, and he calls Riker up to talk about it. And I think it's really funny when Picard is revealing this fact to Riker, and he puts his hand on his hip in a really goofy way. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Freaking Riker's face when he gets so excited. So Aldea is equivalent to Atlantis, so they say, high technology, vanished without a trace, it's a legend. I have some questions about that, but I'm not going to ask them here. So then, they believe that they're led there for a reason, they didn't just happen upon Aldea. So they're contacted by the Aldeans, led by Deep Throat, which is awesome. Because if the world were to see this, it would destroy all we've gained in a few hours. Deep Throat's name in this episode is Ragu. I mean, Radu. Yeah, the name of the vampire from Subspecies. Well, I was thinking the spaghetti sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Troy actually does something this episode. Before the planet decloaks, she senses thousands of minds out there. She said, Scanners may show nothing, sir, but I'm sensing something very strong. That's still not contributing much, because they're going there anyway. It wouldn't have changed anything if she wasn't there. Just hate Troy. I dislike Troy, I don't hate her. You misogynistic bastard. <laughs> it's all being recorded. When they get scanned by the Aldeans, Worf pretty much immediately says that there's similar incidents all decks, but only with the children. He announces that right away. How did they come to that conclusion so quickly? Riker and some of them head down to the planet and figure out what's going on with them down there, at least the basics. When they get there the first time, Radu makes a weird statement where he says, I hope that Duana and I know how to greet you properly, Commander. What the hell does that mean? He's probably heard about the Federation and their problems with other cultures and not being able to handle things properly, and he's worried that he's going to get nuked. Oh, I thought you were going to say nude. Well, that's always a threat, too, in the future. The woman that's with him, is that his daughter? He says she was the last child born, but he doesn't say. She is not a very good actress in this episode. I know her from Starship Troopers, where she's a lot better, even though she doesn't have a big role. And then she plays a different character in Starship Troopers 2 for some reason. But she's not nearly as bad as she is in this episode. She's also in Seinfeld, like everybody else in the 90s. So the children are scanned and taken, but not all of them. When the girl playing the instrument is taken, her instrument falls over from where she was, but it goes in the totally opposite direction. It defies all physics. It's clearly being pulled by somebody from off screen. Why not just drop it? So the Aldeans reveal that they want to take the children because they can't have children of their own and they need to start a whole new generation. I really wanted him to say, we need to start a next generation. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't, unfortunately. There are points in the episode you can tell by Picard's facial expressions. He doesn't say anything, but he wants to go along with the Aldeans' plan because he hates kids. We sympathize with your situation. I like how pissed Picard gets at Deep Throat when he's being so stubborn. No matter what, he's going to take these kids. It doesn't matter what the Enterprise has to say about it. And Picard is just so pissed. He's not used to anybody being above him in terms of authority or anything. He gets so angry, and it's great. We will continue these discussions when you calm down. So they don't take all of the kids. They only take a few of the kids. And Deep Throat tells them, All of you have been chosen because you are special. So eventually, when the kids get back at the end, they're going to tell the other kids, I got taken because I was special, and you got <laughs> left here because you're normal and dumb. Yeah, only you would look at it from that perspective. I wouldn't have thought about that, but that's interesting. There's one point in the conference room where we see all the parents of the children, and I like that because you get to see a lot more officers than we normally do. Usually when they put in a different officer, there's only one, and you know something bad's going to happen to them. One of the adults says to the other, don't give in to fear. And it reminded me of Donnie Darko, those videos that Miss Farmer is showing. Finally, I looked in the mirror. Not just in the mirror. I looked through the mirror. Love. I thought it was a very original series idea to have the Custodian. The Custodian is a computer that was built hundreds of centuries ago, and the computer controls the whole planet and how everything works. Yeah, especially the fact that the Aldeans don't understand it or how it works or anything. They don't even question it, really. It's just a part of their society. So they tell all the kids you have all these intrinsic talents. So for the one boy, he asks, I'm going to be a sculptor? And they tell him, you already are a sculptor, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what about the people who are jerks? You already are a jerk. We just need to bring it out. Yeah, exactly. That's like me. 
The Aldeans have a vast knowledge of the whole galaxy and all the races therein. If they know humans are so attached to their offspring, why don't they pick a species better suited to the bargain they want to make? That's potentially a good question, but I would say the fact that the humans and the Aldeans are so similar. The Enterprise personally has encountered so many races that are basically human already. Mother! It's Commander Riker. <laughs> Your presence honors us. Representatives of the Starfleet Enterprise, do you wish to petition? So, within Picard's ruse, Beverly brings down a scanner and hands it off to Wesley so he can scan one of the Aldeans, and their handoff is terrible and obvious. Oh man, yeah, it's so bad. I like the sculptor kid with the weird little device. I don't know how it works, they don't explain how it works, but I'm assuming it's got some kind of mental connection where you picture whatever you're going to sculpt and just kind of run the thing over it. And this kid's only been there for a few days, I guess, but he's already super good when before he didn't really think of himself that much as a sculptor, I guess. So Wesley gets put with Deep Throat and his wife, and they're eating dinner, and at one point he says, you haven't eaten, and I wouldn't eat that food either. So Wesley hatches a plan down on the planet while the Enterprise is trying to come up with a plan from up above. So he's going to go to the custodian and figure out how it works and how to shut it down if need be. So he sneaks out at night. When he gets out from under his covers, he's in full clothes and he's wearing his shoes. That didn't raise any suspicions when he went to bed. Why did he even need to do that anyway? He can still sneak around in pajamas. That's a good point. And Wesley comes up with a plan. They're going to do passive resistance with all of the kids. So they're going to go on hunger strike. They're not going to do anything the Eldians want them to do. So he needs to get them in a secret meeting. So he sneaks up very quietly while they're sleeping. And then grabs them and violently shakes them awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Beverly figures out why the Aldeans are dying, and it's radiation poisoning. And of course they throw in an environmental thing about the ozone layer, and how it happened on Earth back in the 21st century. It's a little bit heavy-handed, but at the same time, it, especially for the time period, it probably sounded really plausible. So they go down to tell them, we can probably fix your sterilization problem. But before they reveal those facts, which would be a great way to open up conversations and negotiations to say, we can help you, they try and kidnap all the kids, they make a bunch of threats, and are very suspicious. And then the Aldeans find out what they're doing, and then they say, oh, we know why you're sick and we can help you. Yeah, they could have probably resolved the entire situation by just going down and explaining everything. So at the end, they take him into the huge room that nobody's ever been in before. Not haven't been in a while. No one's ever been in the room before. And it has the power source to the planet of the cloaking shield and the custodian. And Deep Throat says, we're going to have to learn how to do everything all over again. But if that was built hundreds of centuries ago, that's going to take a while. I hate Radu's speech at the end when they go into that room. It's almost like you're supposed to see that he's turned a new leaf and everything, and you know he knows what he's talking about again, but it, it doesn't make sense in the context of the entire episode, of everything that's happened up to that point. All this time we've been destroying ourselves, so sure of our technological invulnerability. Now we must learn to use this power safely. At the very end, the one little girl comes back onto the bridge to thank Picard personally, and she hugs him, and he's all uncomfortable and everything. But then after she lets go, everybody's kind of laughing about it, and Picard turns around and you see that he's got a stuffed tribble, I assume that's what it is, stuck to the back of his shirt. And everybody's laughing, and you've got the cringiest, goofiest, dumbest music in the show up to this point, in my opinion. Five. Yes, sir. Certainly, sir. <laughs> I like when Wesley brings her onto the bridge and Picard acts like he brought a violent animal onto the bridge. He physically recoils in fear. <laughs> Maybe he's a germaphobe or something. Maybe he's a childophobe. That sounds inappropriate. A pet pedophobe. Uh, he's got pedophobia. <laughs> he's afraid of feet. <laughs> When the bow breaks, overall, what would you say? Despite the fact that it focuses on kids, I didn't think the kids were that annoying in this episode. I thought the conflict was an interesting one. For once, you have something that's more of a genuine discrepancy as opposed to just a cultural difference. I thought it was a good episode. I would give it a B. Usually, when it's a child-focused episode, to me, I already have low expectations. But yeah, the conflict was interesting, the way they handled it was interesting. It didn't focus only on the kids, there wasn't a kid rescue mission or anything like that. I would not give it a B. <laughs> See, I knew we were going to disagree on this one. I liked this episode a lot. I thought this was the best episode up to this point, other than maybe the pilot. I... wow. 
I would give this one a C. Pretty average. Not rocking my socks off. Sorry, let me say it again. Not rocking my space socks off. 